Hello all. Now, first off, and I'll keep this brief, apologies for last night. OBS for some reason chose to ignore all sound sources and I've yet to work out if it's an ongoing problem. If it is, and bearing in mind I'm not a techie guy, for the time being I'll stream via the PS4. So that's out of the way and on to the sequel trailer. It looks like I may be in a gang of very few people here, but it didn't do very much for me. Starting with the cutscene, the first big moment was seeing Ellie, or at least I assumed it was Ellie because of the eyebrow scar. Now this is the thing, the first real disappointment. It seems that over five years Ellie has changed all of her facial features apart from the eyebrow. She's almost completely unrecognisable. Worse, her features are now vaguely cartoonish and I wonder if this has anything to do with the use of facial motion capture. In an earlier video I expressed concerns over this. Now in the original game Ellie's face was the result of work by artists using software to turn their final sketches into animated glory. Here it's as if facial capture has produced something so real they felt the need to kind of rein it in slightly, stylizing the end result in an effort to remind us we're seeing a video game, not a film. It's like the process has been reversed. Tons of effort to make 14-year-old Ellie look real, then tons of effort to make 19-year-old Ellie look more like a game character. And she's become kind of generic. This is even more the case with her friend Innis, I think her name is. She reminds me of uh, another character from another game, or maybe a cartoon series on TV, but in either case, something aimed at a much younger audience. I think she was a, a mother figure, I can't be sure. Maybe you know who I mean. Anyway, what I'm saying is, the characters all look a bit video game-ish, in a way those from the original didn't. And the acting? Well, it's good, it's actually very good, but only when you compare it to other games where the acting is something better than passable. It didn't wow me, put it that way. Now, I'm not too worried. This was a short scene, and I'm sure the finished product has moments every bit as powerful as we saw in the first game. A few people have already said the kiss seemed very forced, and yeah, I tend to agree. To be honest, the scene with Riley in Left Behind told us as much as we needed to know and mercifully left it to us to fill in the blanks. We don't need to know about Ellie's sexuality because the story of The Last of Us doesn't revolve around it. Now on to the gameplay. I'll start with the environments and as you'd expect they look nothing short of gorgeous. But a few months ago out of pure, almost random, interest. I watched a few videos showing environments created in Unreal 4. What we have here looks like just another of those creations. Beautiful, but in no way unique. If Ellie had been removed from the gameplay opening, and if I'd not tuned in until that moment, I wouldn't be aware it was the game's sequel because a lot of games look that good, and a lot of games have similar visuals. It really could be any high-quality game from within a fairly wide genre, ranging from post-apocalyptic to post-nuclear to post-infection. It doesn't feel uniquely or tellingly The Last of Us. On to gameplay mechanics. In terms of character and AI movement, there is much to like. Ellie can now crawl under low spaces and edge through gaps that would be too small for Joel. Enemy AI seem more intelligent and overall it's a big improvement and we have to hope this better behaviour doesn't go the same way as that which got removed from the original. The HUD remains quite faithful to the first game, that's a very good thing. And the visibility circle is a nice touch, although 
I suspect few players will refer to it in situations where combat is getting a bit hairy. It's not the most visible of devices, but in a way, that's good. You can sort of see it as an optional extra if you want to make use of it. And talking of optional extras, I really hope that's the case with the white changing to red radar to show the alert status of enemies. The first game minimised the amount of extraneous informational graphics, and this radar system simply wasn't there. It's in Uncharted and many other games in exactly the same way, and while it's certainly useful, it's also very, very generic and overused. I have to hope it's like, or indeed a replacement for, the listening mode with the option to turn it off. It's personal preference, of course, but I definitely don't want it. While the standard HUD adapts the original only slightly, the crafting system has been overhauled. Now, while it doesn't look overly complicated, the craftable items and the resources needed for them have been combined, so maybe there is the unfortunate potential for time being wasted by not navigating to the correct slot quickly enough. We only see Ellie crafting one weapon, so for now, it's impossible to know fully how the system works. Maybe it's easier than it looks, so I really can't pass judgment on it. On the subject of crafting, by the way, it's nice to see explosive arrows added. That's something which I thought might happen, so glad to see that. So there's a fair bit of negative-ish stuff here, but these are only first impressions based on one cutscene and less than 10 minutes of gameplay. That's not enough to diminish any of the excitement I feel about the sequel. I don't think it's too worrying, by the way, that we don't see Joel in this trailer. He will have a role to play, but it will be secondary this time, and Naughty Dog needed to show us how Ellie will behave as the main playable character. But this time, we see no infected. And remember, in the three sequel reveals we've seen so far, we've just had a couple of infected in the very last moment of the second teaser. I can't claim this is especially significant, but I stand by my suggestion that the infected may feature far less in The Last of Us Part 2. It makes sense that they could be dying out, and in a game about hate, we need opposing human factions. We can't hate the infected, because they are without motivation. Indeed, apart from fearing them, we tend to feel sorry for their suffering. They are victims of an awful disease. We may be entering into a world where humanity is recovering, but in the process, dividing into bitterly opposed groups. It would make me happy if combat with infected is only frequent enough to remind us that they still exist. So there you are. I wasn't exactly bowled over by this gameplay offering and felt, at the end of it, that I really needed a release date to put a tasty cherry on top of a, a very slightly bland cake, but we didn't get one. Now, that either means it's imminent, which is somewhat unlikely, I know, or that there's a long way to go. I really want to believe it'll come late this year, but it's starting to feel like a bit of a desperate hope. Who knows? Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching, and Dino out.